Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, my name's Jenny. A uh, slightly different video today, if any of you have seen any of my other videos you'll know that I kind of do some various eco-friendly alternative product reviews and also some kind of crafty um, how-to videos. This is slightly different but kind of on the same sort of vein and I basically just felt that I found these sort of videos so useful when I was planning my own wedding that I thought I would do one of my own and share my own experiences in case any of you guys found it useful. Uh, this video is going to be a bit more of a list of things we did which saved us money um, as a sort of trigger for you guys to think, you know, are these things that are really important to me? Am I just doing it this way because I assumed this was the way it was going to be done? Do I actually care that much if I have this product or this product? So it's kind of just a video to give you some points to think about and ways it's definitely possible to save money uh, if you want to. I think I'll probably do another video of things that we did which definitely didn't save us money. Um, not necessarily mistakes, but we'll go into it that time. Uh, so yeah, if you want me to go into any of these kind of sections of the things I mentioned here in more detail, just put it in the comment box below, that's not a problem, I can do a separate video on those. But if I went into everything on this list in detail, we'd be here for hours. So, let's get started. So to start with, the first thing we saved money on, which I didn't actually realise immediately, was uh, my engagement ring. So it's got three kind of stones and then also stones down the shoulder here. And initially I was like blown away by how nice it was, but also like seriously worried about having something so expensive looking on my finger. Uh, thankfully, my now husband knows me and these stones, despite the fact that they look like diamonds, are actually cubic zirconia stones. Um, so they're kind of like a synthetic crystal, really. And, it, you know, it hasn't changed my opinion on how much I love the ring. Uh, it was, you know, probably, I don't know how much it costs exactly, but I think it was about a quarter of the price, if not less, than a ring made like this out of diamonds would be. I'm less worried about someone taking it off me. I'm less worried about um, losing it. As far as I'm aware, no one else has been able to tell the difference anyway. Uh, the thing with engagement rings is obviously diamonds, you know, have they come from a reputable mine? What are the conditions people are working in? And a lot of places are kind of being more responsible and kind of owning up to where their sources are coming from. Um, but that was something I always kind of bore in my mind when I was thinking about engagement rings. Uh, other alternatives, of course, are getting antique rings um, or vintage rings um, or artificial diamonds as well. And there's also other artificial gemstones, not just cubic zirconia, but also things like morthonite. Um, which you might want to look into. Some people are very hard and set, you know, I want this diamond, I want this diamond ring, maybe this isn't an option for you, but if you're thinking, I'm not actually that bothered what it looks like as long as what it's made of, as long as it looks nice, then that's something just to think about. One of the other things that we did, which saved us a ton of time and money, um, because we had quite a large guest this really, was doing online invites, and we had our own wedding website. So all the information that you'd normally put in your invite was on the website. We could customize and add to it at any time. And we could send the invitations out through their email addresses and they could log back into the website and fill in their own menu options kind of in real time. We could then download their menu options into an Excel file and send that straight off to the uh, caterers. And it saved us a ton of effort. Um, everyone quite liked the interactivity of the website. It was quite quite nice, we had some of our engagement shoe photos and things like that up there. Initially we weren't quite sure how it would be received, but really positively received and we didn't have to pay for having the invitations made and printed, but the postage costs, so that was something that we'd really recommend. So my dress. I was very anxious when I started dress shopping because I just could not, in my mind, just think about spending all those thousands of pounds on a dress you're wearing for one day. I guess some people maybe are more mentally prepared for this, but I was just not. I was so shocked when I realised how much wedding dresses cost. Um, I looked around for some secondhand ones and I went to some sort of secondhand shops to see what I could find. Tried a few things on but nothing really did it for me. And I'm not recommending that you know choose something that you're not happy with just because it saves you money or just because it's more eco-friendly. You know, at the end of the day you've got to you know, be happy with what you have and the photos that you have from your wedding day are the photos that you'll have with you for the rest of your life. So I do think it's important to, you know, look and feel your best. What we went with in the end, there's a few shops near us where they're essentially like end of the line dresses. So there's no more and you go and you see what the dresses are and the dress is there in that size and that's the dress you take away or you leave it. And you can't hold them or anything like that, which makes it quite stressful. So my dress, which was worth about 1500 pounds normally, I got for 600 pounds. 
it was absolutely beautiful it was exactly what i wanted yes it needed more alterations um because it was a couple of sizes too big but that you know it was perfect by the time the seamstresses did their work and it saved us so much money and i was so i didn't feel that sort of weight of oh my god i've spent this much money on my dress you know i was happy with the price point and, and i was amazed with how well it looked at the end of it so again i think you know it might be that again you don't find the dress that you want from these sort of shops but i think it's worth looking because you might find an absolute bargain and that's money that you can either save or spend on other things you'd like to spend it on so it's just something to consider thinking about to go with my dress i bought uh high street shoes to go with it so my dress had kind of notes of like peach uh in the lace detailing so i got some kind of nude peachy shoes uh, just off the high street to go with it obviously initially i was looking at uh traditional wedding shoes but again you're looking at over 100 nearly 200 pounds for some of these shoes that aren't nothing special they're probably not something you'd wear again unless you like particularly like silky creamy satiny sort of shoes that's one pair of shoes for your day whereas i got two pairs of shoes for still half the price that i would have paid for one set of wedding shoes i've worn them both on occasions since to other people's weddings or to out to nice meals um, the shoes were 30 quid each from high street shops and when one pair started to kill my feet I just changed into the other pair, much more comfortable and carried on with my night. It worked really well. Uh, the only thing I would say is trying to make sure that the heels, if you are wearing heels, are kind of the same height between the shoes otherwise your dress will start trailing on the floor or your dress will suddenly look half mast. So that's just one thing to think about but again really pleased what we chose. The other thing that saved us loads of money was I made my own hair piece for my wedding and also all the hair pieces for all my bridesmaids basically using the hair vine technique and again this would have probably saved us the best part of 100 pounds if not more um and it's one of those things if you enjoy doing arts and crafts then it's definitely worth it because it's quite fun it's quite sort of calming to do if you're the sort of person that doesn't like hand making things this probably isn't something you'll want to do because it is quite fiddly and at the end of the day if you don't enjoy it in my opinion there's kind of no point doing it but if you are someone who likes trying to make things by hand, I would say that I was surprised by how easy they were to make and also by how expensive they are to buy. So if you want to save money and you've got a little bit of time, it's definitely worth doing. I'll try to put a picture somewhere around here of a snapshot so you can see hopefully that it looks pretty professional. Um, and I also have done another video on how I made one of the bridesmaids ones. If you are interested in having a look, I'll try and link that somewhere as well. Uh, all the jewellery that I wore on a wedding day was things I already owned. So the earrings that I was wearing were a gift from my parents for my 18th birthday. My bracelet that I was wearing was a gift of my, from my mum um, as my sort of something borrowed. And that was it really. I had quite a high neckline so I didn't really need a necklace to go with it. And again, you know, if you've got your, your heart set on something in particular that you really, you know, that's the vision you've got, then, you know, go for it. But if you already have some nice pieces, I would say there's no point just buying extra bits for the sake of it. You know, the whole look is still going to be new. I don't think someone's going to recognise that one set of earrings or that one bracelet. You know, I don't think it will detract from the overall look you're going for. One of the bigger jobs that I was, if I'm honest with myself, more anxious about than quite a lot of the other things was that I did all the flowers for my wedding. I did my own bouquets, the bridesmaid bouquets, quite large flower displays um, for the church hall which again, I'll try and put some snapshots somewhere so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And because obviously you can't do them really far in advance, they are something you have to do, we did the day before, I think it was. Um, and then we had to finish dressing them on the morning of the wedding. And in honesty, it was far less stressful than I thought it would be. And I think a lot of this kind of stress taken out of it was by the fact that I did a practice run about six months earlier. Um, and again, really happy with how they came out. Most people didn't realise Unless, unless I told them that I'd made them myself, no one else realised that I'd made them myself. Everyone was very complimentary about the displays. And again, the reason I started looking into making them myself was because I looked at the prices that people were charging. And I appreciate, you know, it's a skilled craft and things like that. Um, but I just couldn't justify the expense that they were charging. And again, we had quite a lot of guests. I had four bridesmaids, um, quite a large venue. In order to deck that out at the, cost they, at the fees they were charging, it really was just not affordable for us. The kind of cheat that I had was that I did actually train to be a florist for a year or so. So I had a bit more confidence perhaps than what other people would. But also that I'd say is one of my bridesmaids with no florist experience made a, made a kind of oasis table display um, for our entrance table and it looked great. And it, you just need a bit of confidence. You just need a bit of trial and error. You've got to have a sort of, again, like a sort of vision in your mind of the sort of thing you're trying to achieve. 
but it's definitely doable and again all of the flowers are expensive that we bought and uh, we bought them in bulk a fraction of the cost that it would have done otherwise and so again if it's something that you think you might like to try um especially if you're not trying to go for anything too enthusiastic then i would definitely recommend it for some more of the uh, venue decor things that we did so we did all our own sort of table centerpieces so for each kind of table centerpiece we had uh, a pillar candle on a gold stand that we'd sort of modified and some gold candlesticks with well candlestick holders with candlesticks going up and the color theme for our wedding was sort of royal blue and gold um and so i made like kind of gold hints to all of these and all of these bits were all mismatched or what bit higgledy piggledy um and they were all things that i got for, you know 50p a pound at charity shops again it depends how on like how extravagant you're wanting your table display to be as to how much money you're going to save if you were just going to have a tea light all the way along then it wouldn't have saved you money if you were thinking of quite an extravagant display and again we had a big hole i wanted something impressive as people were going in then yes i think it saved money i also think it added a bit of character um it was quite fun again for myself i enjoyed doing these arts and crafts things doing the spray painting the painting of these candles and candle holders the candles themselves are really inexpensive from Ikea, in case anyone has an Ikea near them. I uh, would definitely recommend. And the all of these candles were on a sort of um, a wooden slab, which is actually something my dad spent so many hours doing. They were just some wood slabs that someone was going to throw away, so we were chopping down a tree. My dad salvaged them, uh, sanded them down, varnished them, they looked great. And again, they're the sort of thing you, can, you could buy you know, between, anywhere between three and five pounds probably more per slab and if you're getting you know 20 odd of these the money adds up on top of everything else and it was really nice actually because one of my other cousins is getting married later this year and they are using those slabs from our wedding so again it's kind of a reusing style thing rather than a sort of buying and binning if it was someone else i'd have sold it to them but because it's my cousin it's you know it's a gift um so that was those. The other things we did was we hand wrote all our own place names. So again, just got some royal blue card that was pre-folded and I learned some sort of pretty basic, I guess, calligraphy skills, got some gold ink, wrote everyone's name on it. And because we bought the card in bulk and because I did it all by hand, yes, it took extra time, um, took extra effort to learn those skills to begin with, but that's now skills that I have myself. It, you know, it saved quite a lot of money because the cards themselves was a couple of pounds for all the card that we needed. The ink bottle, you know, a couple of quid, the nib, a couple of quid. And if you wanted to get kind of fancier designs or the made for you, you know, you're looking at least a pound, if not more per card, which doesn't seem like much, but if you've got 130 desks, that's 130 quid on bits of card that's going to go in the bin as soon as they finish eating their food. We also didn't give any wedding favours out to anyone. Um, it was something that I hadn't, hadn't really realised was a thing before I got engaged and then realised again that once you're spending one, two, three pounds per person, probably more, on getting them something they might actually like, when you've got 130, 140 guests, it's just extra money and it's extra money that we didn't feel that we had to spend and I'd been to other weddings where essentially they all just got left behind. People don't want to carry a succulent plant around with them. People don't want to carry like big candles around with them. People don't want to carry like bits of like games around with them. If it doesn't fit in people's clutches, they're not going to take it with them. And again, it's stuff that's going in the bin. You're not going to want a hundred succulents, nice though they are. And it was just something we decided to go without. And I think having spoken to quite a lot of my kind of friends and family, I think that was something that in honesty, I don't think they really noticed the absence of either. One other thing that I made, which again, if you've got fewer tables that we did, we only had three tables because we had long trestle tables. Um, might not save you that much money, but we made our own table numbers. So we did kind of watercolour ombre washes with like gold um, calligraphy numbers and a sort of rose gold frame around it at the end of each table. And again, we've got those, once we take the numbers out, we've got those frames we can put in our own wedding photos. It's not something that's wasted. The rest of it, again, was just paper. It can go in the recycling, something like that. Um, really didn't take more than a couple of hours of work really to do it nicely. If you've got more tables and you've got more scope to save more money, I suppose. One of the things that was sort of a mistake, sort of a saving money thing, not quite sure where it balances out yet actually, was supplying our own wine for our wedding. And a lot of venues don't let you do this. Our venue was really helpful, let us supply our own wine 
for our wedding breakfast at Caterers I happened to pour it. We were really lucky with the lovely people we had around us. And it meant that kind of per bottle of wine, we saved a lot of money because we could get, you know, we did a lot of wine tasting ourselves, which was loads of fun. Brought some friends and family around and chose the bottles that we all liked and bought those. And obviously any spare ones we could take away with us afterwards. Um, there were potentially some cons to that, which I'll probably go into in another video. But for the kind of wedding breakfast itself, that definitely reduced the amount of money that we spent. One of the things that saved us so much money and was just so amazing was one of our really good friends actually made our wedding cake for us. And we knew she was a good baker. We, we'd enjoyed things that she made for us before. She made a cake for our engagement party as a surprise and it was just amazing. Um, she made our wedding cake for us and they pulled out all the stops. Her and her husband uh, jointly kind of baked and decorated and brought up the, our wedding cake uh, with the flavours that we wanted and it was so beautiful that when we went the next day to collect our stuff some of the staff from the venue um, who were helping with the tidying up were still marvelling at how nice the cake was and we would literally we wouldn't have paid for something like that because it would have been so much money it was three tiers it was so beautiful they even had you know spare flowers in the car that they switched out part through the day without us even noticing um, to keep it looking fresh and beautiful all day. And again, that saved us hundreds and hundreds um, of pounds. That cake went on a cake stand that I made myself from an old crate. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever filmed that footage. If I film that footage, I might put it on YouTube. Um, but it is a similar technique to how I made my cake, um, what are they called? My cake toppers. So we made cake to topper initials with um, MDF wooden letters, which I did make a video about and put on YouTube uh, if you're interested, but it was the same sort of technique as that, which is kind of like whitewashing and then using like dry brushing gold paint onto the corners. It looked really effective and wasn't too extravagant that it detracted anything from the cake at all because the cake was just such an impressive centrepiece. But again, if you've got someone whose arm you can twist into baking your wedding cake, I would definitely recommend doing so because it will save you a lot of money. Now, I'm sure when I start fem filming this, that I will think of tons of extra things that we did because there just seems to be endless amounts of everything when you're planning a wedding. Um, but the last thing I've got to say to you is that instead of buying, buying? Instead of hiring wedding cars, we hired taxis from a local taxi rank. And initially my dad was disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. He was hoping he was gonna go into some like Bentley or some Rolls Royce or something. Uh, sorry dad, but we got into some black cabs and I was totally happy that with that decision again it kind of spurred me to think about that when I was thinking of hiring the traditional wedding car, you know, I just assumed it was something I'd be doing. And again, it was like £500 to take us there, something like that, for not even particularly exciting cars to take you there. We were only staying 15 minutes around the corner. Everyone else is already going to be in the church. Who's going to see me in this £500, 15 minute journey? No one. So it was at that point that I was just like, we'll just get taxis. So instead of it spending about £500 to get there, and then who's going to take you away from the venue afterwards anyway, um, I think we spent something like £70 for all the transport there and back for all of the wedding party and our parents. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're not particularly precious about what vehicle you arrive in, or people aren't going to see you arrive, so they're not going to know what fancy vehicle you came in anyway, then... I would say it's definitely something to think about and also our ceremony and reception were all in one venue potentially obviously if you're going from one venue to the other people are going to see you in your nice car you might not want to be in a black cab fair enough um but it's just something to think about again and that's all the sort of points i have to say about today as i said um, at the beginning of the video if there's certain things that you'd like a bit more information on you're not quite sure what i meant by that put it in the comments down below i'll either reply to your comment or I'll make a fresh video if there's enough people wanting it um about any of the points I mentioned in this. I just kind of meant this video to be a sort of things you could think about. Um, are they things that are particularly important to you that you definitely want them this way? Or are there things that you were just doing that way because you're assuming there wasn't alternatives? Because if you're not particularly bothered about doing it a particular way, then there's definitely much more scope for saving money. And weddings are a really expensive process. Despite all the changes that we made, you know, we still spent probably about double what I initially had in my mind that we would spend and I think a lot of that down is down to the number of guests that you have if you have a large number of guests that we did there's a limit as to how much money you how low the price can get but you can still definitely 
save loads of money because if you're timesing everything by 130, 140 more, then any small change that you make will save you money and that is quite a satisfying thing. Um, I think it's important as well not to feel like you're scrimped on your wedding day, but just kind of making smarter choices, shopping around and not necessarily just going with what you'd assume to be the right thing. And if you've got friends or family that can have things you can borrow who've been married, um, you know, bits of jewellery, you know, veils even. I've seen, I've had friends that have just borrowed someone else's veil. It's not something that you'd potentially notice with someone else's veil, but veils cost a weirdly large amount of money. So it's just things to think about. I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do. Um, and I'm sure there's loads of things that we spent money on that potentially we couldn't have, but I just feel if we kind of have this conversation and share, then, you know, there's kind of benefits all around. All right, so I hope this was useful. It was a bit different to some of my usual videos. I will do a video on things that we spent more money on than potentially we could have done. Um, again, just for information and advice purposes. So that's all from me. I'll see you in my next video.